Hello students, this is a presentation for the Cannabis Education Center at Holyoke Community College. I'm Sage Frenetovich, the instructor for this course. Um, this is a course on cannabis cultivation, and today we're going to discuss plant diseases and pests. This is Cannabis Plant Pathology 101. Now, a plant disease is anything that prevents your plant from growing to its full potential. And today we're going to look at five of the most common issues that people face when growing cannabis. Are plant diseases important? A little background here and some broad information. Well, of course they are, um, especially with such a high value crop as cannabis. Plant diseases and pests can cost you a lot of money. They can cost your business a lot of money. So it's important that we know what to look for and how to identify our pests and also how to treat them and prevent them. Plant diseases have a long history. So as long as people have been cultivating plants, they have been dealing with plant diseases. Um, when you look at the history of plant pathology, you see things like late blight of potato causing the Irish potato famine. Uh, erga of rye um, is shown on the bottom there. The bottom left picture is showing some rye seed heads with ergot. Um, ergot produces the chemical LSD and can lead to um, hallucinations when people eat infected ergot. Interestingly, it's uh, blamed for the Salem witch trials. So that's an interesting plant disease to look at. And there are also plant diseases like Dutch elm disease. So that can affect big plants and cause dramatic changes in the natural landscape. Um, on the right is a picture of uh, an early pathologist using some uh, pretty bizarre methods to um, treat plant diseases and diseases for, of people. There are two major types of diseases. There are biotic diseases and abiotic diseases. We're going to be focusing on the biotic today, and those are caused by living pathogens, so disease-causing organisms. Abiotic, that means without biotic, um, ca are caused by non-living factors. So in our growing of cannabis, we're going to encounter different uh, pests, fungi, um, different types of living things that are going to affect our plants, and then the non-living things. So you can get abiotic plant diseases by um, giving too little nutrients or too many nutrients. Nutrient lockout is one type of abiotic disease that we'll talk about when we discuss um, the nutrition of plants. Abiotic diseases also include um, things like mowing damage. Um, those are kind of human caused, but the, the actual physical thing would be the mower causing it. We see that a lot with um, tree diseases. There's a thing called mower disease where people bang their lawnmower against a tree and causes problems for the tree. So abiotic things are all um, caused by not living things. Even hailstorms can cause a type of abiotic disease. So for biotic factors, our living things, a disease to occur needs three things. This is the disease triangle. And to have disease, you need to have a host plant or cannabis plant. You need to have a pathogen, a disease causing organism, and you need the right environment. So without one of those three factors, we don't have disease, okay? Some common diseases ca caused by organisms, um, these are diseases of cannabis, include fungal diseases and insect diseases, and to a lesser extent, viruses and bacteria. So for fungi, we're gonna look specifically at these four, botrytis, white powdery mildew, fusarium, and pythium. And then one insect that's a big uh, pest for our cannabis is spider mites. Um, we're not going to mention viruses and bacteria here, uh, although they can affect our plants. Um, they're a lot less common for cannabis. So a fungus is a filamentous organism. 
So that means that it has these little filaments called hyphae, and that's how it grows. Um, for the fungus, those hyphae absorb nutrition. They spread out and just absorb food from the environment. And often that food comes from plant tissue. Sometimes in the forest, if you're looking at mushrooms, a type of fungus, the, the hyphae can absorb their nutrition through decaying plant material. But as a disease causing organism, those hyphae will extend throughout the plant or parts of the plant and absorb nutrition from the plant. And that's nutrition that your plant needs. So it's not a good thing. Fungi produce spores, which are not the same as seeds, but they're similar. And these can kind of sprout to make new hyphae. So fungi spread through spores and many spores are airborne and very hard to control and prevent. Uh, we will talk about some pre uh, preventative me measures and some ways to control these diseases. The first fungal disease I want to talk about is Botrytis. Botrytis is the genus, and most often we see Botrytis cinerea. That's the genus and species name for this. Uh, Botrytis is called gray mold or bud rot. So you might hear that instead of Botrytis. Now, Botrytis in general is um, a plant disease fungus, but it is useful in some areas. So Botrytis can attack wine grapes. And when it does that, the Botrytis fungus gets on the outside of the wine grapes and extracts um, a lot of water from the grapes and breaks down the sugars inside the grapes in such a way that adds to some unique flavor. Botrytized wine goes for a really high price and it's where winemakers have intentionally inoculated their wine grapes with botrytis to get this fancy kind of interesting flavored wine. So they've taken this disease and used it to an economical advantage. But for cannabis, we can't really do that. Um, at least I haven't found a way. This most commonly occurs in the flowering stages, so at the end of the plant's life cycle. I'm kind of starting at the end here because this is one that um, can cause the most heartbreak for a cannabis grower. You've put all this time and energy into making these wonderful plants and you're, they're blooming, they're flowering, you're looking at them and then you get a heavy rain or um, you're, you overwater and then Botrytis bud rot can set in. So this is one that is, um, is preventable. And because this happens at the flowering stage, what we have here are plants with a lot of surface area. There's a lot of leaf matter and you have these wonderful buds that are very rich in nutrition. And so all those buds have those kind of nooks and crannies where moisture can get in and cause the fungus to grow. Those little spores that are airborne uh, can quote unquote sprout. And so we have botrytis spores all around us. Uh, actually in one cubic meter of air, there are about a million spores, fungal spores. So there's really no way to completely prevent them. Um, air purifiers can help, uh, but we want to, if we see any grayish buds, remove that infected material immediately. Also, if you're growing outdoor, uh, botrytis can occur when you have your flowering plants and you get that heavy rain. So if possible, you can harvest before the rain. I know um, it's fall of 2020 right now and we had a very dry summer and then it kind of got wet in October where it's time to harvest the cannabis and um, there were, you know, growers had questions of whether they should harvest before it rains, maybe have a little bit less potent product or af after the rain and risk botrytis. So it's something to consider with outdoor. When you're growing indoor and you have these nice big buds, you need to make sure that you're not getting too much moisture on them. Um, and you might switch to a drip type irrigation if you had overhead. Um, so removing infected material immediately can stop the spread of botrytis. These are some pictures of what it looks like. You'll see green one day and gray the next. 
Uh, you, if you look inside your bud, that's a good way to tell if you have this problem. You take a mature bud, looks good on the left there, lots of trichomes. And once you kind of open it up, if you see that grayish brown deadening of the material there, you know you have an, a fungal infection. Over on the right, it's a little more gray. You can see it on the outer part of that small bud. This is just a image showing the disease cycle of Botrytis. We have a couple different uh, stages shown here. The conidia are spores of this fungus. This is showing the hyphae, the little filaments that are shown here too. They're also called mycelia when you have lots of the hyphae together. Uh, the spores, the conidia can land on plant tissue with a lot of moisture the rot sets in and you can see the little extensions of the hyphae from the spores. And so they will grow and fruit and then keep attacking your plant. So the earlier you can get rid of the botrytis, botrytis infected material, the better off you are. Cull it early and uh, keep your plants dry when they have flowers. I'm going to end our part one here and please join me for part two on the other video.